Winnipeg fans on an awesome Filipino heritage night, the Winnipeg Jets put on an equally perf- awesome performance on the ice against the Dallas Stars, defeating the Stars 5-1 to one in Rick Bonus's first attempt as head coach against his former team. The Jets play dominant hockey. Winnipeg looked really fast, really aggressive. This is the hockey we've all been waiting for. Is it a sign of things to come? We'll talk about that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Your Locked On the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. Doing so is completely free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just love and appreciate your support. Now, on tonight's episode, obviously, we are talking about the Winnipeg Jets. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty hyped, man. Uh, Winnipeg had a phenomenal game against the Dallas Stars. And it came on a super awesome promo night. Um, as somebody who is of Southeast Asian descent, uh, seeing representation with uh, Filipino Heritage Night, in this case, you know, you have Pacific Islander um, and Pacific Asian, which is just a, a fantastic representation uh, for, you know, a, a really big diversity statement from the Jets. It's awesome that we have this. We already had a fantastic uh, Indigenous First Nations night, and now the Jets are, are back with an awesome promo here with the Filipino Heritage Night. I hope that they continue running these. I think it's great to reach out to different segments of the fan base. Um and also, we get really sick logos. We get amazing jersey designs. Uh, if you're planning to bid on one of those warm-up jerseys, I wish you luck. I think they're going to be very popular. Uh, the the logos and and the photo or the the numbering on the backs of the jerseys and stuff. The designs are beautiful. They look fantastic. I honestly would be super interested myself in getting one, but I'm sure they'll be super expensive. But of course, you know, Filipino Heritage Night was only one part of this whole equation. The Jets had a big rematch game against the Dallas Stars, and they're not going to play them very many times this season. I think they're only facing them, what, three times total, which is obviously a big change this year to how some of the divisional matchups are working. Uh, So it was really important for the Jets to come out with a big performance. And well, (laughs) let's just say the Jets put on one of the best games they've played in many years. Now, uh, you know, over the past couple of seasons under Maurice, the Jets have had games where they've been really good against strong opponents, but I think the way that they played this game was really impressive to me because it showed how the Jets ideally play uh, under Rick Bonus. Now, not everything was perfect. Um, There were some turnovers and mistakes in the game, but you just don't really get too upset about that when the Jets played such high octane, such fun hockey. Um, This was a really great game in terms of uh, chance generation for the Jets. Winnipeg was pounding the slot consistently. They were getting to the middle of the ice. And I think the most impressive thing was that, well, quite honestly, they broke the Dallas Stars. I don't remember the last time I have ever said that about a Jets team um, since like 2017, 2018, not only outplaying an opponent, but outplaying and breaking the spirit of one of the top teams in the league. Make no mistake, this Dallas Stars team has been nigh unstoppable. This is only their fourth regulation loss of the year, and in all of their previous games, even some of their losses, they have been a force on the ice to be reckoned with, and in this game, they were completely rubbed out, which is really funny because they were actually the first ones to score. Uh, Jason Robertson, who is actually of Filipino descent, very awesome that he scored on um, Filipino Heritage Night. But after that goal, you know, usually you've seen the Jets uh, go through these stretches where they have great starts and then they can see the first goal and it's all downhill from there. This team, though, this year feels different. I mean, even in the games in which they've they've been poor, um, you don't really see them quitting or, or losing morale in the way that they might have in previous years. The Jets just got right back to work and immediately, immediately tied it up and then just a few seconds later took the lead. 
just stuff that you really would not expect this team to do. Um, and once they had that lead, they just never relinquished it. Uh, and honestly, the Stars almost never really threatened to uh, take that back, even when Jason Robertson was on the ice. Once he was off the ice, like they basically generated nothing. Uh, Robertson did have a couple of really good looks in the slot, but you know, Winnipeg being brave and blocking and having Hellebuck in that kind of nullified that. Um, you know, th- this was just a really complete game. And I, I think for Bones, it's a really good sign of what this team is capable of. You know, the, the big criticism of this team over the past few years has been that they're just not fun to watch. They're not, not an enjoyable team. Um, we don't need perfection, right? That's that's not what we're asking for. But for the Jets to be entertaining, aggressive, fun, uh, capable of creating offense, that's what we want to see. And I think the Jets delivered that in spades in this game. It was a thorough domination. Even from the start of the game, Winnipeg was out playing Dallas from puck drop. And they had like, what, like 15 to 18 shots after the end of the first period. Just fantastic stuff. Uh, and something really worth shouting about. Now. I think the biggest question after this game is, is how many times can they do this this season, especially against teams that are on par with Dallas? I, I don't know if I can really answer that yet. Um, but, you know, this is a team without Ehlers, without Barron, some of their regular contributors in the lineup. So if this is how well they can play against one of the top teams in the league, and if they can do it more frequently, you're feeling pretty good about this season and maybe even feeling a little bit decent about the postseason. Now, look, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and blow smoke up anyone's butt. I'm not going to tell you that this team is going to play like this every game. They're not. This team still has a lot of room for growth. They're still learning, still kind of working out some of the kinks. But let me tell you something. The Jets this year are way more fun to watch, and even when they're bad, they're still fun, uh, in part because they can still find those those greasy goals, and Hellebuck is still doing what he does in that And it just feels like the vibes are a lot stronger with this team, which is kind of one of the big things Bowens wanted to focus on. But this game was a tactical masterclass. The Jets executed Bowens' vision perfectly, and they shut the stars down. Now, I think there are some uh, individual level performances that I really want to spotlight because, you know, from a team effort that was so dominant across the board, you know, obviously you might be wondering, okay, well, who amongst this great crowd really stood above the rest, head and shoulders. We'll talk about those players and what I like about their performances and what it might mean for the rest of the season in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because uh, I was looking to improve my immune system and get ready for, you know, obviously the fall season is is coming along. uh, And in between COVID, there's plenty of other bacteria and viruses. And you just want to arm yourself with all of the vitamins and nutrients you need to resist all of that stuff and make sure your body has a personal defense shield. If you're wondering what AG1 from Athletic Greens is, well, It's a great product that's only one scoop in a cup of water, and with it, you get 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It gives you a special blend of ingredients to support your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, uh, gives you energy, helps you recovery. Um, and, and really just gives you all of the, uh, you know, different vitamins and minerals to help you focus during your day. It's a great all in one supplement and it really helps you save money too. For less than $3 a day, you are arming your system with a great nutritional supplement and it eliminates the needs for, you know, tons and tons of vitamin pills and stuff, which a lot of you probably aren't into. Uh, you know, you're not really wanting GMOs, nasty chemicals, and all of those gross additives. And, you know, This is a great product because it's also really healthy for you. It contains less than one gram of sugar, and it's made to support all sorts of lifestyles, whether you're on diets including keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. They're sensitive to all your needs, and, you know, it's a really small micro habit that can have a really nice impact on your quality of living. So if you're ready to get started, you know, this is a great time. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient Uh, daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Obviously, we're talking about Winnipeg uh, against the Dallas Stars. Great game. Fantastic game. Super fun to watch. Best game of the season, in my opinion. Better than the Blues game. Um, just a lot to really take in and enjoy. And I wanted to focus on a couple of players that I think really stood out for me. Uh, some guys who had fantastic performances that are are, very, are really worth crowing about. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out one of our other partner podcasts that I highly recommend you check out. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports, Locked On Sports Today helps you go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and analysis that only we can provide. You can check out Locked On Sports Today on all of your favorite podcasting platforms, same as where Locked On Jets is available. So be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now. Circling back to the Jets, obviously Winnipeg had a massive W uh, in this game in which uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect, to be honest. After the first game in which they got pancaked by the Stars, you know, this was honestly a little bit of a nervy time. You know, you thought Winnipeg might show up and, and maybe get outplayed, or even if they played well, they'd still lose. Instead, the Jets just straight up demolished the Stars, man, uh, which is just amazing to say. And I, I, like I said, the way that they did it was really impressive. They were really good at making zone exits. Um, they basically stifled all of Dallas's offensive pushes. And it wasn't until like the, the back half of the game where the Jets really let off the gas. And that's when the Stars had a few extra opportunities. But generally speaking, they just didn't do anything with it. Now, in individual performances that are worth spotlighting, the first you got to say is Mark Shifley, man. This kid is is back. Shifley looks engaged. He's locked in. He's been really good this season, but I, I think the biggest thing with him in, in like previous years is that away from Maurice, he seems to be very liberated. Uh, he's playing faster. His body language looks really good. He seems happier, and he's showing off that he really is still an elite playmaking center. He had a couple of really nice goals, and he was part of some great tic-tac opportunities with uh with Connor and um, Appleton, you know, which this trio hasn't always been amazing this season. Appleton hasn't always been able to keep up, but in this game, they didn't really have any issues. Uh, this trio was working overtime. They scored some beautiful goals, and Shifley was really at the center of a lot of it. Unfortunately, he could not get his hat trick. A uh, bit of a bummer. I was hoping that they would put him out there for the empty netter, but instead, Appleton got it. Although, you know, Appleton deserved a nice little goal for himself, so you can't really be upset, can you? Uh, but it would have been nice if Mark was able to convert on his hat trick opportunity, opportunity, and I, I believe it would be his fifth or sixth hat trick of his career. So, uh, slight missed opportunity, but you suspect he's going to get it later this year. He's just been playing too well to really imagine that he won't walk away with a hattie at some point. Also of note, man, Kyle Connor. Um, Look, defensively, he's still a train wreck. That's not changed. Uh, and he still still has occasional moments where he's like trying to take on too many guys. But then he does stuff like he did on the assist of the one Shifley goal where he nutmegged Hakanpa after um, rolling around the back of the net and basically engaging three or four different Dallas skaters, basically embarrassed all of them, <laughs> curled back along the left faceoff circle, nutmegged Hakanpa with a beautiful pass to Shifley. Shifley didn't miss. And, you know, that was just an amazing play. KFC was dishing the puck regularly all night, looked very locked in. Uh, again, the only thing with him that you have to realize is that defensively, you're not going to get a lot of support out of him. His vision is always to go up the ice, man. This dude wants to offensively activate all the time, uh, which isn't always helpful in certain scenarios. But, you know, when he's scoring and doing what Kyle Connor can do, I mean, you really can't be upset with it. He had a fun performance, had some fabulous plays this evening, uh, just stuff you really love to see. And I'll, I'll give Appleton some props tonight. This is probably one of his stronger games. Um, he had a nice pass, uh, I believe on the, was it the Shifley goal? One of them, I forget. Um, but just in general, looked like a better player. Not all of his opportunities were things he could convert on, but, you know, he had the empty netter. He had a couple of really good setup passes, just looked like he was getting to more dangerous areas consistently, which over the past few weeks is not something that he's done. He's tried to fill in for Ehlers as much as he can, but you can kind of tell he's probably punching a little bit above the level of competition that he is typically used to. That said, this game, he had a nice outing. He kept up for the most part and uh, got himself a point or two, which is nice. 
So just happy for him. I, I think this is a really nice feel good kind of game and maybe he'll start to show off a little bit more and keep up a little bit more frequently. Hopefully it unlocks something in his game where he can use those four checking skills uh, to greater effect. But in general, just a lot of props for the first line thought they looked good. Now, aside from that, there were a few other performances. Well, not really a few, but a couple more names that I'm going to drop here in a little bit and talk about and, and really spotlight because, you know, it was a huge team effort, but again, Uh, I always want to make sure that I acknowledge really strong individual performances, and the Jets got quite a few this evening. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. We are coming back to uh, close out tonight with a few more, I guess, props, you might say, for how the Jets played. Uh, I wanted to focus on a couple of players and talk about some things that I noticed uh, from guys who were doing really well. Again, pretty much the entire team played well, so it's really hard to say that anyone didn't really play well. I think the only group that you might look at is like Morrissey and Pionk, just because Pionk struggled with a few turnovers. Unfortunately, his turnover and subsequent, um, (laughs) well, whatever it was he was trying to do in front of Hellebuck didn't really stop Robertson from scoring, but it is what it is, right? Uh, Aside from that, though, I mean, this this team had a great performance. And of those players, I really wanted to shout out uh, a couple of extra players that maybe won't get a lot of recognition Uh, Perfetti for me definitely deserves props. I think the thing that I noticed the most with him this evening was his defensive recoveries. He was constantly dropping below the goal line, recovering the puck, winning board battles, um, either maintaining possession under pressure or cycling the puck out and, you know, facilitating zone exits. He was constantly back there doing all of the hard work. And he actually did get an assist later in the game on um, the Dubois goal that was uh, Wedgwood or, uh, yeah, was it, was it Wedgwood? Yeah. Mishandling the puck behind the net and then kind of doing a hella buck, but you know, overall just a really nice night from him, even though it didn't lead to a ton of scoring, he did so much of the grindy work that is kind of a necessity of playing in the bone system. And it definitely had some nice results. Also Dubois, again, he's just continuing his season of really strong performances, even though the goal was like an empty netter, he'd been playing well enough to really deserve that. And that second line with him has just been clicking along pretty well. Uh, Sure, it might not finish on every opportunity. You don't have a ton of natural shooters there. But Dubois has been such an effective two-way playmaking force that it's not really been an issue. I I wish he would stick around, and I hope maybe this season. I You know, at the start of it, I didn't really have any hope whatsoever um, that he would stick around. But maybe, just maybe, there's something that changes his mind if this team looks like it's on the track towards actually being competitive but he may still want to go to the Habs and if he does I can't really blame him I understand you know you have a lifelong dream and you want to see it out but Dubois if you're listening brother please stay (laughs) Uh, he's fun to watch he was a force tonight and had a really good night speaking of centers who had really good nights um, David Gustafson man like you want a player who understands the details of the game at an intimate level and just brings a steady level of consistent play every single night Gus is the guy. I mean, whether it's on the PK, at even strength, he is constantly creating on the forecheck. He's sniffing out danger, cutting it off aggressively, trying to create plays and zone exits. He just does everything really well. And I I know that if you give him skill and you start to elevate his role, he is going to shine for this team. Uh, The closest I could imagine is like a really versatile two-way Lars Eller. I think if he slotted into like that middle six slash top six role, rotational kind of wing or center, I think he'd do a phenomenal job. There is a really talented player there, and I think the Jets really should do themselves a favor and give him more ice time and more responsibility. Uh, Also... Really dangerous opportunities this evening. Uh, could not get them to go, but then he finally got a nice little tip deflection from Pionk. Uh, things you love to see, and he has been grinding. He's been working real hard and finally gets rewarded for a goal. Now, the last player that I definitely want to spot. Oh. Apologies, folks. Uh, we just cut out briefly. I'm not sure if you heard that. I was just saying Menelainen finally got a reward for you know a hard shift, a hardworking shift. Nice tip deflection from Pionk. Um, But there was one more player that I wanted to discuss, and that is Dylan DeMello. DeMello had one of the strongest performances of the evening. He looked defensively stout. He sniffed out danger, blocked shots, 
made some nice zone exits and was just a completely stabilizing, stifling force against the stars stuff that you really want to see out of him. And he has just been a revelation for this team again, as he always is. Would be nice to see him get a bump up in his role. I think if you swapped him in Pionk, I think it'd be much better for that top pairing. But obviously, uh, Bones kind of likes 44 and 4 together. Uh, I still don't think that's the best arrangement. But, you know, if DeMello is going to keep being used in this role, at least it means that your third pairing is going to be shut down and you're not really going to have to work uh, worry about it. So, yeah, all said and done, Jets dominated play, had a phenomenal evening. Very happy about these results. Um, not sure if it's going to be something they can do frequently and replicate, but you know what? You never know. Maybe Bones has finally figured this team out. Maybe he's got them playing. I mean, these are things that the Jets really couldn't do under Maurice. So if he can at least make it happen a little more frequently for this team, that's already an improvement. Uh, but we'll see how the rest of the season shakes out. It's still very early, but the Jets are in second in the division, uh, or in the Western Conference and first in the division, thanks to you know, the point split and everything, even though they played a little bit less than Dallas has. But second in the Western Conference, didn't really see that coming in 12 games into the season, especially missing Ehlers for most of it. But this team seems to have tons of surprises in store for us. So let's hope they continue. For tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have, though. Uh, obviously, the Jets are, you know, on and off playing for the next few days. So we'll give you coverage as we can. And hopefully, Winnipeg keeps racking up those standing points and wins. But again, like I said, for tonight, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. For your next listen, again, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It features the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and our take of the day. It's available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms for free, so like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go!